PlayStation's God of War Ragnarok is finally here, but before you dive into your adventure with Kratos and Atreus, there are some in-game settings that you should definitely consider changing. Also, a huge thanks to PlayStation for providing me with the game early so that this video was made possible. I can't express how grateful I am for that. Anyway, the first settings we'll be looking at fall under the gameplay section and then under the playstyle subheading. Setting number one is auto pickup, which by default is set to off, but there are three other options that just make so much more sense to me. The first is called Essentials, which makes it so that instead of having to hit a button when you find health and rage stones to collect them, Kratos will pick them up automatically when you approach them, thus saving time. Economy is the same but just for loot and resources, whilst Full combines the two so that Kratos automatically picks up stones when needed and also saves you time by collecting loot without you needing to manually hit any buttons. Personally, I like to have this on Full as it makes the game a little more fast paced and fluid in my opinion, which I quite like. Setting number two is to swap the controls for Interact and Evade. If you're anything like me, you love all of PlayStation Studios titles like Spider-Man, Horizon and The Last of Us, so you'll be used to using Circle to dodge and cross to jump and climb. Activating this setting ensures the controls follow that usual formula. That said, this does still come down to personal preference, I just felt it's worth mentioning as I imagine most of you would prefer Circle for dodging. The third setting is to set menu holds to fast in order to speed up menu navigation when using shops and your inventory. This should save you some time, getting you back into the action so much faster. Setting 4 is Tutorial Mode, which unless you are entirely new to the God of War games, I recommend setting it to minimal to give you a more cinematic experience. You will still receive tutorial alerts for anything new, but you won't be constantly reminded of controls you've already learned. Settings 5 and 6 are both found under the Touchpad Shortcut subheading, with the first being that I recommend you set Swipe Up and Swipe Down, both to HUD Toggle. This means you'll easily be able to bring up the hood if you want to check your health while not in combat, and can also easily remove the hood if you are wanting to capture some cinematic screenshots or footage during actual gameplay. Next up, I advise you set swipe right to quick turn, as then the controls motion matches what is displayed on screen, and you can still use L1 and down on the D-pad for this anyway. It's just nice to have a touchpad option there. If you wish, you can then assign a different function to swipe left, but personally I've set this to quick turn too. Just note that the camera always pans right no matter which way you swipe. Before moving on to more in-game settings, if you've bought the game on PS5, I strongly recommend going to your PS5 UI and hitting the three dots next to play game and unfollowing the game for now. If you follow the game before finishing the story, there's a serious chance you'll see spoilers on your PS5's explore tab as a result of the gameplay others are posting. This is just a precaution I recommend you take as I know other people have already seen spoilers because of this. The next couple settings fall under the graphics and camera section. Setting 7 is to ensure that high frame rate mode is enabled if the option is available to you, as it will boost FPS in both graphics modes. You will only have access to this if your TV supports VRR and you have it enabled in your system settings. I do have a full video about variable refresh rate on PS5 if you are interested too, and that will be linked to the top right. Setting number 8 is also related to visuals and performance, and is just for you to be sure that you have chosen the best graphics mode for you. There's a visual on screen now from Sony Santa Monica Studio explaining the differences between the modes available on different consoles, and I don't want to be the one that makes this choice for you as personal preferences do vary. That said, I do prefer to favour performance on both the PS5 and PS4 Pro, the small difference in resolution just isn't worth such a large loss of frame rate in my opinion. If your TV does support VRR and high frame rate though, the PS5's quality mode is well worth considering, as Sony Santa Monica Studio has done an excellent job optimising it, and it does run at an uncapped 40fps. Setting 9 is Motion Blur. If you've opted to run the game in quality mode at 30fps on either PS4 or PS5, then I'd leave this at the default 10, but if you're running in the 40fps PS5 quality mode, maybe drop it down to a value between 5 and 7. If you've opted for performance on a PS4 Pro, I'd recommend setting it to 7 or 8. For PS5's performance modes though, I'd set it to a maximum of 5, but a lot of you might prefer it if you turn it off entirely, so give it a go and just see what you think. I'm still experimenting with my own too, but at the moment I do just have it set on 5. Now the 10 setting is certainly an interesting one that I first saw on Horizon Forbidden West and it's the option to aim using the controller's motion sensor. If you turn this on and hop in the game whilst holding L2, the right thumbstick will still work to aim, but you can also twist and tilt the dual sense to move across crosshair, giving you mouse-like precision. It can take a lot of getting used to, but practice with it and you'll probably find combat even more enjoyable. I beg you to try it for at least half an hour and then 
then decide whether to keep it or not. I know I'm leaving mine on. It's just so awesome. I'd love to hear everyone else's thoughts on this option in the comments though. It's quite innovative. To find the next settings, go back to the main settings menu and into the accessibility submenu. I would like to give a lot of praise to PlayStation and Santa Monica Studio for their incredible work when it comes to accessibility for this game. There are so many options here that are going to allow for a much better experience for so many gamers worldwide. It's just excellent to see that accessibility is becoming such a great focus in recent AAA titles, so credit to PlayStation Studios for really starting off this trend. Anyway, setting 11 is under the combat subheading and it is to change evade style to default plus. All this does is make it so a double tap of your dodge button performs a sidestep with a roll and holding it does so on repeat. Leave it on default and holding it would just do the same as a double tap, so default plus gives you a little extra flexibility. Our 12th setting is navigation assist beneath the navigation and puzzle subheading. Setting this to on lets you press R3 to rotate the camera in the direction of a currently selected objective, meaning you can quickly get back on track if you lose your sense of direction. It's a nice option to have available just in case you ever do need it with no actual downsides, so you might as well just turn it on. Now, if you're wanting to further enhance your experience on not just God of War Ragnarok, but all of your other games too, then watch your videos on screen now to see all of the settings you should change in your PS5 and PS4 system menu. There are settings in there enabling new features, enhancing audio quality and all sorts, so I really recommend you give them a watch ASAP.